Welcome to our new video. As Windows 10 nears its end of life and Windows 11 doesn't seem like a viable option for many users, Linux emerges as an alternative. However, newcomers often face several questions that make them hesitate about switching to this free and open source operating system. In this video, we will discuss some of those questions, so stay tuned. A common concern among potential Linux converts is the operating system's complexity and steep learning curve. Truth be told, that was the case 20 years ago. Nowadays, there are Linux variants or distributions, as they are called within the Linux community, that are even more user-friendly than the proprietary operating system you might be used to. Take Linux Mint or Zorin OS, both Ubuntu-based Linux distributions, as appropriate examples. They offer a workflow and overall environment that users will find familiar from the start. You'll be able to begin working with these distributions as soon as you turn on your computer. However, it's true that if you install a fringe distro, which is outside of the most popular ones, you may encounter issues and come to the conclusion that Linux is a hard-to-learn operating system. Following the previous issue, the next doubt newcomers usually have is whether they will need to use the command line at some point. A couple of decades ago, this was indeed true. Graphical user interfaces for Linux were not as advanced as they are today. Moreover, users now have a choice among several graphical user interfaces, such as GNOME, Plasma, Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE, Pantheon, Cosmic, and more. All of these interfaces are highly advanced and offer different user experiences and workflows, ensuring that anyone can find something that suits their needs. However, if certain significant issues arise, it's similar to Windows. Ultimately, you will need to use the command line to resolve those issues or seek assistance. In Linux, it's easy to find help online, whether on forums or social media. You'll always find members of the Linux community ready to offer support and guide you through the process of troubleshooting. Another myth about Linux is that the operating system lacks applications. This is not true. Official repositories for Linux distributions typically offer thousands of applications. In addition, users have access to various software formats and platforms, such as Flatpak, Snap and App Images, which provide hundreds, if not thousands of regularly updated apps designed to run on any Linux distribution. However, it is important to note that some significant applications like Microsoft Office or Adobe Suite, do not run on Linux. But to be fair, this is not Linux's fault. It ultimately depends on the vendors who choose not to make their software available for Linux. At the same time, Linux has viable alternatives to many applications that do not run on its platform. For instance, LibreOffice is nearly as powerful as MS Office. GIMP serves as a decent substitute for Photoshop. Furthermore, the number of apps offered as online services is increasing. These applications work primarily in web browsers, making them accessible on Linux just as they are on any other operating system. Similarly, another issue that perplexes newcomers to Linux is hardware compatibility. The common myth is that Linux doesn't support hardware and lacks drivers. Plainly, this is not true. 
the Linux kernel is regularly updated and drivers are incorporated directly into the kernel. As a result, when using peripherals or components of your system, you often do not need to install additional drivers because they are already included. Your machine will typically work out of the box after installation. However, there are instances where certain hardware components may not function properly under Linux. Again, this is not Linux's fault. It largely depends on whether manufacturers provide drivers for the Linux kernel. If they do not, then issues with your hardware are likely to arise. Thus, the best piece of advice is to take some time to research online whether the hardware you own supports Linux. A question that has been burning recently is whether Linux is good for gaming. Several years ago, Linux was hardly considered an option for gamers. However, things have changed significantly since then. Gaming and Linux has improved considerably, with several Linux distributions dedicated specifically to gaming. One popular gaming platform, Steam, offers thousands of games available for Linux. In fact, Steam even has its own gaming console that runs on Linux. While it's true that certain games may not be available on Linux simultaneously with their Windows counterparts, they will eventually become available on Linux as well. While the list of issues certainly does not end here, these may be the most important ones to consider. What are your thoughts on the myths surrounding Linux? Should newcomers believe in them, or should they be skeptical? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, please share it, give it a like, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time.